been on a World Cup game here watching Germany versus Cyprus and it's going to be Worker B with Dragon against Laskas on Crab. We're gonna have a quick look at the deck lists. Just gonna check that everything is working fine. Yes, it appears to be working fine. Uh, and this appears to be a very standard dragon list. Bansai is uh, maybe a bit out of the ordinary, otherwise we have Pathfinder's Blades, Reprieves and Skirmishers. No weird guys in the Dynasty side. Two Agasta Shunsen and only Agasta Shunsen and only two Master Alchemists is a bit spicy perhaps, but uh, uh, it's also quite reasonable. Shunsen of course is to fetch uh, really important attachments like Reprieve or Pathfinder's Blade when you need them. Uh, and the crab list is an aggressive one on Lion Splash, so that is going to be really interesting to see. Three Kuni Laboratories, I'm guessing he's going to be relying heavily on those to just push through conflicts. Uh, and I'm going to tell the guys that uh, we're good to go. And I'm going to full screen this, and we should be, should be good. Should be good. Actually, I'm going to have a quick look. Are we live? Yes, we should be live. Yes, we are live, it's just a bit slow. <sighs> cool. Uh, and one thing to note here that is uh, the cup games are actually timed. So both players have 45 minutes to make their moves. If the time runs out for one party, that's it, you have lost. Right, so both players are now doing their mulligans. I'm going to do full screen again. Actually, I'm going to have a quick look at the crab deck. So, one Legion of One, three ready for battle, two strengthening numbers, one heroic resolve. Mountain does not fall. Yeah, Spice of course, it, Court is really interesting here. And, of course, Spice of Court is if you win a political conflict, dishonor a participating character on your side and then discard two random cards from your opponents. Uh, also charge and censures. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting game. So uh, we see Worker B Mulligan three cards, and Velasquez has kept all Dynasty. <laughs> Thank you very much for the Prime subscription. Kalim PD. Uh, and alright, let's see the flip. So we see double Kayo Envoy and Hida Guardian and Karada Dystic. Wow, this is an opening and a half for the crab player. Uh, this is an absolute excellent opening for the crab player. This is pretty much exactly what you want to see. Uh, so, double Kyo Envoy. Kyo Envoy, of course, has both courtesy when this character leaves play, gain one fate, and sincerity when this character leaves play, draw one card. So, they basically pay for themselves and they also draw cards at the end of the turn. Uh, the Dragon Player puts out uh, Togashi Mendicant, which is the ability is really not really why you play it, but it's okay. And Togashi Initiate action when this character is attacking, spend one fate to an unclaimed ring and honor this character, which is pretty nice. And we do see the bids here, and Worker B bids 5 and Laskas bid 3. So he's going to rely on drawing when these two carry envoys leaves play. Uh, the ability, of course, of the Hida Guardian is uh, whoop, action. When this character is participating in a conflict, choose another participating character until the end of the conflict. That character gets plus 2 plus 2 for each holding you control. Uh, it's really strong, like especially late game if you have multiple holdings. Uh, Karada District, of course, is the crab unique province that steals attachments. You pay one fate and then you steal an attachment. You pay one fate to your opponent and then you steal an attachment. And Mind's Desire, yes, with a dragon expertise here, says uh, Dragon should have bought Mendicant and passed. You just bank fate versus Karada and then break it in one turn when you have a big board. Yeah, that's a reasonable solution to Karada District, I find. The, the problem here is uh, this crab is not uh, an ordinary crab. This is actually uh, an aggro crab, believe it or not. Uh, 
aggro crab in a way that it runs charge, lion splash with legions of one, and three Kuni laboratories, and a bunch of other interesting stuff. So, uh, not having a board against uh, this sort of crab might get dangerous quickly. Uh, the skirmisher and the carry envoys attack uh, military and converts this Togashi initiate and stops it from defending. And he runs into Sacred Sanctuary, which is after an attack is declared this province, choose a monk character you control, ready that character, and until the end of the conflict that character cannot be bowed. And then we have a few things here. So right, so worker B plays Hurricane Punch on Togashi Menendikent, and that is answered by an Bansai uh, from Laskas. So we currently have uh, attacker 6 and defender 3. And now Workaby counters with his own Banzai. So now the defender is up to 7 versus 6 for the attacker. <laughs> and Mind's Desire says you can just take two breaks and you'll be fine. Yeah, maybe. I always find it a bit scary to uh, take breaks early on against sort of like aggro deck that is. is. I mean, also, Sacred Sanctuary is not really a province you want the uh, opposing player to destroy. It's a really good province. Uh, of course, you don't know what he's going to find at the start of the turn. So currently the defender is winning the conflict, and the crab player is thinking hard about what he wants to do here. Alright, he passes. So he, he doesn't have anything more to expend on this conflict, and chooses to just let it go, I guess. So the dragon player saves Sacred Sanctuary for this turn. And now is the dragon player's turn to attack. I imagine he's probably going to attack Void here. Void is a very good ring here. Void or Water are really good rings to attack with here. Uh, of course, Void ring is to remove the Hida Guardian from play. Uh, he's going to die then at the end of uh, this round. And it also stops the crab player from grabbing Void himself and voiding out this Togashi initiate, which is really nice. Water, of course, it is to bow this envoy, but that just probably means the envoy is going to defend. And we do see the Togashi initiate go in with Void and finds Manicure Gardens. So action, during a conflict at this province, gain one fate. It's just a very nice economy province. Nothing too special. So uh, the crab player chooses to not defend at all and just gains a fate from the manicure gardens. I imagine it's because he's probably thinking in his head that uh, the dragon player m might not have any more military buffs. He expended uh, both a hurricane punch and a bonsai. So the Togashi Nishi's action is used. He uses the action to spend one fate to the air ring and honor himself. He's now a 3-3, which is always nice. Yeah, there was uh, there was some people that uh, complained about people not hovering over cards when there's new players around and just saying stuff that they're not uh, don't know what they do. So I'm trying to be const instructive here and um, make sure people get a grasp of what's going on. And we do see a fine katana attachment gets played on two Togashi initiate here. Uh, this means that he now has two plus one plus two from being honored skill. So that's five skill and that's enough to break the four strength province. Uh, which he does and he um, discards a uh, face down Kisada from the province. That's actually a pretty big hit. Uh, the Void Ring also removes the, f the fate from Hida Guardian here. So now the Crab player attacks Air because he just wants to get the fate off that ring that the Dragon player spent to honor the Togashi Initiate. And now he's going in again on Sacred Sanctuary. He really wants this to break. 
He is going to have to expend some sort of card for for this to break though, because he's going in with a uh, one zero and a one one. I'm guessing it's because he wants to use the Hida Guardian to uh, buff the Kyogre. Yeah, that's probably what he's going to do. So he's going to use the Hida Guardian's action to give plus two plus two to the Kyogre Envoy because he has one holding in uh, his province line. But yeah, this is also something that's really interesting. The crap player is actually Seeker of Earth. <laughs> Many think Seeker of Earth is just straight up terrible. But uh, apparently Seeker Fate is winning out in this sort of deck. Uh, Alright, so we do see Hida Guardian give plus uh, 2 plus 2 to the Kaya Envoy. So he is now 3 to 1, he's currently breaking Sacred Sanctuary. He really wants to break this province. And in response we do see a Seal of the Dragon gets played to the Gash Initiate. So... And in response to that, we see Nizumi Infiltrator and actually lowering the uh, Sacred Sanctuary. So, N Nizumi Infiltrator is, says, Reaction, after this character enters play during a conflict, until the end of the conflict, raise or lower the strength of the attacked province by 1, to a minimum of 1. So this 2 strength province is now reduced to a 1 strength province. This means that even if uh, the dragon player here uses his stronghold to buff up this uh, mendicant, it's still going to break. I imagine we're going to see the crab player just passing here. He's up by one, winning and breaking. And in response we see Hawk Tattoo used on Togashi Initiate. I am intrigued. Oh, Void Fist. Ah, that's a card. So Void Fist is used to bow and send home the Kaio Envoy. And in return, uh, Karada District steals Seal of the Dragon from Togashi Mendicant. He just used Karada, yeah. He, he, he just used Karada to steal the seal. So, uh, he wins the conflict, plays Pais at court. He should be breaking the... Yeah, he breaks the province. And... Oh, he forces a cloud the mind and reprieve to be discarded at random. So, for those that don't know, Spice at court. After you in a political conflict, dishonor a friendly participating character. Whoop, it went away. Actually, I'm going to take this one over here. Dishonor a friendly participating character, discard two cards at random from your opponent's hand. So he dishonored his Hida Guardian and he hit both Cloud the Mind and the Reprieve, which is huge. Uh, before the, um, the Togashi Mendicant leaves play, he uses his action to just look at the top three card and reorder them, so he gets to see what he gets in his Dynasty uh, line this turn. Alright, uh, a lot of passes going on, and now the new round has begin, begun. Uh, we see the dragon player play Swordsmith with two fate, very standard play. He's really strong because he can tutor for any attachment. And then he also plays Shunsen, which is more tutor for attachments. He is really going for attachments, which is a bit strange because Karada is still alive. This should be interesting. Uh, we do see the dragon player get uh, passing fate, and we see a three to one bid. So the dragon player is now down to five honor against twelve for the crab player. Uh, the hand sizes are pretty much identical, six to five. So. Third Tower Guard, this character is plus two military while you have claimed the Earth or Watering. Yeah, solid card. Here we see the Dragon Player play uh, a Haruma Skirmisher. Reaction, after you play this character it gains Convert until the end of the phase. So he plays this the first action in the uh, Conflict phase. He then uses Agasha Swordsmith, search the top five cards 
in your conflict deck for an attachment, reveal it and add it to your hand. And we do see him pick a finger of jade. I imagine he is going to be attaching that to the swordsmith to uh, prevent it from getting assassinated by the crab player. Actually, does the crab player run assassinate? We're going to have a quick look at the deck list. Uh, he does not run assassinate. That is interesting. Uh, so, we see the crab player pass here, and it's up to Worker B to declare his first conflict of this turn. I think the crab player needs to be really careful here. If he walks into a feast or famine with a double fated Suichi, that's going to hurt. So, I think he needs to scout with like as little strength as possible, perhaps even considering. Um, sacrificing the dude he scouts with. And we see that the Karada district has landed on defend the wall. Uh, so Workabee goes in with the Togashi Initiate and the uh, Skirmisher. Uh, that is 8 skill and Laskas defends with uh, 4. He can of course use his stronghold to give plus 1 plus 1 to all the Participating defending characters, but uh, that might not be enough here. So, the first action from the dragon player is to use the stronghold to give uh, plus two plus two to Togashi Initiate. It gives uh, the dragon stronghold gives uh, plus one military and plus one political for each attachment on the character up to a maximum of plus two plus two. So, it's currently ten to four, and this means that. Um, defend the wall and Karada district is currently breaking. Uh, hopefully the crab player has something to play here to save Karada district. Like worst case scenario, I think you steal uh, the fine katana, but there are so many better things you can possibly steal with Karada district, so you might not want to do that yet. Ah. We see another Nisumi Infiltrator drop, so this time it doesn't lower the province strength, it increases the province strength. And in response to this we see a Hurricane Punch from uh, Worker B. This means he has played one card, I think. Yeah, so one thing you have to keep in mind about the, the Void Punch, Void Fist card is that you have to play two other cards first before you can void fist something. So he has played one card now with Hurricane Punch. If he plays a second card you can pretty much figure out that the void fist is coming. So I think this is a bit too premature. Perhaps. So, uh, what happened is quickly the uh, the fine katana was stolen by Karada District, and then it gets let go by the dragon player, and now a bonsai is getting played by the crab player. He is currently now winning this conflict. He he is uh, 12 to 10. I think... Yes, he actually kicked the Bansai. Yeah, cool. Uh, it looked like he didn't didn't kick the Bansai. Kick the Bansai means that uh, you spend, you lose one honor to resolve this ability twice. So instead of getting plus 2, you get plus 4. Uh, and in response to this, uh, Worker B uses f his favorable ground. During a conflict, sacrifice his holdings, use a character you control, move that character to the conflict or home from the conflict. So he moves his uh, Togashi Initiate home. And currently the crab player is heavily winning. Hopefully for him he has a mountain does not fall or any sort of like way to capitalize on this. I mean he could always go something like water and try and gain. 
um, something good out of it. Otherwise, what's gonna going to happen is, oh, basically what's going to happen otherwise is uh, all of these guys are going to get bowed, and then the dragon player is just going to walk in with the rest of his board and break uh, defend the wall regardless. So we did see a neat little thing here. So Pathfinder's Blade got played on the Hiruma Skirmisher. And Pathfinder's Blade obviously says interrupt. When the effects of a triggered ability on, an, on the attacked province would initiate, if attached character is attacking, sacrifice this attachment, cancel those effects. So basically he played this card in order to uh, uh, stop the defend the wall. Reaction after you win a conflict this province to resolve the ring effect of that conflict as if you were the attacking player. So it basically denied the firing to Alaska's here by just playing a single card. And now he is... Now the crab player is going water and he finds restoration of balance with uh, exactly four cards in hand. Restoration of balance is normally a really scary province to find because uh, it says after this province is revealed your opponent chooses and discards cards from his or her hand until that player has four or fewer cards. So uh, he hits restoration with exactly four cards in hand so he doesn't have to discard anything. And he also forces the crab player to defend. Because if he gets to use the watering here, he's gonna stand uh, Suichi up and then defend with him again. Alright, we see currently it's uh, two political skill against three political skill. And we see a Kami Unleashed. And instantly a Cloud of Mind gets attached to Kami Unleashed. So Kami Unleashed says, action, while this character is attacking, sacrifice it, resolve the ring effect of the contested ring as if you won the conflict as the attacking player. And in response to this, a seal of the dragon goes down, so he is actually now winning the defense with the Tugash Initiate by a single point. And now we're going to see the dragon player walk in with these two guys on probably defend the wall. If he has any sort of political buff left in hand, he is going to walk in on the fender wall and break it and discard Karada. Ah, so it looks like he does have some sort of political buff in hand. I imagine this is going to be a court games. Ah, I see what's going on. So, basically what happens here is Shunsen returns the ring he just won on defense, searches his entire deck for his last political buff, attaches it to Shunsen, and breaks the Karada. That is very strong, and he forces a reprieve to be discarded at random. Honestly... Alright, so he had zero fate left, yeah. If he had any fate left, I would have pre-played this on Suichi. Right, so the dragon player is currently ahead. He has broken two provinces to one from the for the crab, and he has now gotten rid of Karada District. Of course, crab could rebuild. Oh, and this is looking to be a turn where crab gets a bit aggressive, but also we have from the dragon player Mitsu. Mitsu is, of course, a very strong card. Uh, crab player is first. I imagine he's going to buy this uh, tower guard. Yeah. And from the dragon player, we're probably going to see. Oh, dragon player plays Doom Chugenya, and that means the crab player passes. And now we see the dragon player play Mitsu. So this guy is has covert. It's a four three and has action during a conflict in which this character is participating. Choose a monk, tattoo or key who card in your conflict discard pile. Play that card as if it were in your hand. If it's an event, put it at the bottom of your conflict deck instead of into your discard pile after resolving its effect. Ah, thanks for the follow, Lamoy. Or Lamorge or whatever. I, I'm I'm really bad at Twitch names, I'm sorry. Uh, we do see a 1 to 3 bid again. 
So, Rocky B is down to four honor. And he, Rocky B is now up on cards compared to Laska's. Uh, quick things to see. So, Cooney Laboratory gets fired. He loses one honor, but all his characters in play gets plus one, plus one for this. Uh, yeah, for the round, basically. It's a very strong card. Uh, we also see him use Imperial Storehouse, sacrifice his holding, draw one card. So, he sort of like equalizes a little bit on cards here. And now we're going to see the crab attack with uh, third tower guard and the Zumi infiltrator. Remember, these guys are actually now um, not one ones; they are two twos because of Kuni Laboratory. So he's going in with four strength, both uh, political and military. Uh, the defense from the dragon player is the Shunsen and Doom Shigenya. So he is defending with four, four skill plus f one from the Imperial favor, so five skill. So the dragon player is currently winning, so he's just passing the first action, forcing the crab player to play cards in order to accomplish anything here, basically. This is not a position you want to be in as as the player with less cards. If you can ever put uh, the player with less cards in a position where he has to spend cards to gain any sort of benefits, you're probably doing it right. Uh, the crap player is uh, taking his time here thinking about this. He might have a buff, but it's going to be a pretty precious resource at this point, and he might want to consider using it for defense rather than offense. It would be really interesting to be able to see the crab player's hand here, because I imagine he is <laughs> having some really rough decisions here. Yeah, so the crab player just passes. Uh, he doesn't use spend any cards. So uh, currently, uh, the dragon player wins the airing. So basically, the honor pressure is completely off for this turn. Like there's, th he cannot he cannot die to this honor this turn now. It's impossible for him to do it. We do see a finger of jade attached to Mitsu. Uh, I'm not sure that is correct. Is there anything the crab player might have that could target Mitsu? Oh wow, that's really interesting. So uh, Mitsu walks into flooded waste. Uh, I'm really surprised to see this as a uh, province in the row. Uh, so, for those who don't know this, Flooded Waste is a two-strength province that says reaction after this province is revealed, bow each attacking character. So, basically he probably just stopped the break. I mean, there's always the possibility that the Dragon Player uh, uses uh, Favorable Ground to move in Agasha Swordsmith, or just plays a Conflict character and then uh, gives it a attachment of any kind and then use a stronghold to have it have enough strength to break this province. Uh, there's also the problem that uh, Mitsu is actually still participating so whatever the um, crab player puts in on defense is probably going to get uh, void fisted out because he has a void fist in his discard. He just has to play two cards and then he can void fist. Yeah, and this is probably what's going to happen here. So we do see a uh, skirmisher played in response here to this tattooed wanderer. And now we see a hurricane punch played on the uh, tattooed wanderer. And uh, I'm guessing, like, we're, we're probably not even going to see the. Uh, 
we're not even going to see the uh, what's his face void fist now because he's already winning and breaking so uh, we actually do see the favorable ground sacrifice to send our Mitsu home this is basically to use the water ring to ready him from winning this conflict And yeah, minus as I actually pointed out, he was still winning uh, by default because he had favor when he walked in. Uh, that is very true, but he did want to break this. So he 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 used favorable ground, sacrificed uh, this holding, choose a character you control, move that character to the conflict or home for the conflict. So he sent uh, Mitsu home, which means if he uses the watering on Mitsu, uh, he is already home and he doesn't have to go home and bow at the end of the conflict. Which is like really strong. He's probably going to go in on the stronghold with Mitsu and uh, Swordsmith this turn. And it's going to be really rough for the crab player. And here we also see why the Favorable Ground is such a good card. It basically allowed the uh, dragon player last turn to uh, push 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 for a conflict and force the crab to respond to this and when he realized he was losing anyway he just moved one of the attacking characters out and then came back in again and broke the province afterwards because the crab had spent so much defending and now we see the favorable ground move out uh, Mitsu and ready him from the watering it's uh, such a strong card favorable ground. It's, it's just really really nice to have that in just to flip it and then know that you can do so much more during your turn than you normally could. And here we see the third tower guard go in in uh, political void and we do see a defense from the swordsmith. So it's currently 2-2 two to two because Again, this 1-1 one, one tower guard is getting plus 1 plus 1 from the Cooney Laboratory. And Mayan's Desire says, I don't know why he is defending, I would not defend. Uh, I guess. I mean, it, it depends on what you want to do, because he basically just uses Shunsen here to find any sort of attachment, and then uses uh, s uh, the... Uh, Stronghold to buff up the swordsmith. This again forces the crab player to spend a card from his hand if he actually wants to win this conflict. And it also saves the dragon player from having to play reprieve on either Shunsen or swordsmith. Oh yeah, there's also good points uh, by the chat. He might be defending. You might be defending to not lose the honor, and you might be defending to try and dodge the second spice at court. We're actually gonna have a quick peek at what the crab is having under the stronghold. Uh, we do see a Kami unleashed first play, so this can resolve the ring again. But since we're played with fate, I, I doubt we're going to see that. So I'm going to have a quick look at the crowd player. He should be playing entrenched position under the stronghold. Hmm, interesting. I don't think it's necessarily failed to play unleashed with a fate here. Uh, it could be good for the next turn if he survives that long. Oh yeah, Minus Desire has a really good point here. You use Shunsen to tutor reprieve if you need to. Yeah, that's uh, a really strong line actually. And uh, what you see under the Crab Stronghold is entrenched position. So I imagine this uh, Mitsu is basically going to be using 
uh, a hurricane punch and draw a card for free. And that's an ancestral dice show. Oh yeah, so basically what's going to happen, he played dice show, he hurricane punches from his discard, and then he plays a void fist. And if he has a Uh, why do you why do you spend the katana here? Why do you actually? All right, so I. All right, so I'm a bit surprised that he actually spent the katana from hand here when you could have just used a hurricane punch from your uh, discard pile and drawn a card for free. That seems like the better line, right? Or have I missed? Have Mitsu actually gone off this turn already? Uh, I'm, a, I'm just I'm just a little bit surprised that uh, he actually played the katana now instead of saving that for next turn, I guess. No, he didn't. Uh, he didn't use void fist from the yard. He had he. The second Void Fist came from his hand. He had one already in here and now it's two. I think. Did I miss that? I'm gonna have to quickly go back up. Uh, no, he just plays Void Fist. He didn't use Mitsu to grab the Void Fist out of this card. So uh, instead of playing this katana, I would have basically just grabbed a uh, hurricane punch from the discard and then used the void fist in my hand to to bow out. That that way you you have two extra cards. You have still have the katana that you can put down at any point, and you s you draw drew a card from the hurricane punch. It's just it's it's just uh, a bit interesting. Uh. Alright, so we quickly go to the dynasty phase here, and there's a lot of guys getting played, so Crab is playing out his entire board, he plays Hidakisada, which basically stops the first action each conflict unless uh, the Crab player has lost the conflict. He also plays Yasuki, which gets to, uh, uh, while he's participating in a conflict, he gets, if there's a holding in play, look at the top two cards and pick one, and then he also plays uh, Kugue. Of the draw phase begin, if you have lower on your opponent, look at the top three cards in your conflict deck and put them back in any order. Which is not going to get used because he is currently up on honor and this is uh, before the bids are revealed. So, now we see a three bid from Workaby and a five bid from the Crab player. So now the Crab player is actually up on uh, cards, but his board is really temporary compared to the Dragon player. Alright, so uh, basically it's going to be really tough for the dragon player to crack the crab this turn because uh, the crab's board is huge. Of course, what he's going to do is he's going to send in Mitsu, he's going to bait a bunch of defense, and if he's losing he's going to move out Mitsu. And then he's going to do the same thing again in the other type of conflict. Yeah, so the chat is discussing why he didn't use Mitsu last turn, and I don't know. He might have just forgot that Mitsu can use stuff from his discard. I don't know. Maybe he's nervous. Maybe he thought he used it, but forgot that he hadn't used it. it uh, lots of things could happen. So what basically is going on here is he's um, attacking Political Void, and he is s s forcing Kisada to sit at home. Or is he going anything? Uh, yeah, okay, he looks like he's actually going military earth instead. 
So he basically just wants the fate and force the uh, crab player to defend here, and then he's probably going to be pulling out Mitsu. Yeah, this is uh, this is a huge overcommit on defense from the crab player in my opinion, because uh, what's basically going to happen is Mitsu is going to threaten to do a bunch of stuff, and then he's going to go home, and then he's going to come back with the Shunsen and just break this politically instead. Yeah, so so the the crab player I think is uh is kind of overcommitting on defense here. I mean he he he's super scared that like this Mitsu can get so big from using stronghold and using stuff in his discard to just pump him and stuff like that. So he's basically scared that if he doesn't commit enough here, Mitsu is just going to walk in and destroy this province. But the thing is the dragon player knows that he just have to threaten to break here and as soon as uh, he realizes he actually can't break he's just gonna pull Mitsu out and all of these guys are going to get bowed from the crab player oh yeah mine desire also has a good point here uh, he can just hawk tattoo in Kisada now and then peace out so Hawk Tattoo, for those that don't know it, is a really strong card. Uh, reaction, after you play this attachment during a conflict, move attached character to the conflict. If attached character is a monk, you may take another action after this one. So you can put this on an opponent's character, draw them into a conflict, and then he can use Favorable Ground to move Mitsu out. And then he comes back in with Mitsu and Shunsen on political. And then the crab player only has a Kami Unleashed. Alright, so we do see a mountain does not fall on Suichi. This means Suichi is actually going to be around to defend the second conflict. But I imagine this means that during the second conflict, Suichi is going to get void punched in the face. Not void punched, void fisted. It's hurricane punch, void fist. Yes, someone in chat is actually going to yell at me for that. Alright, so uh, I think. Alright, so I think I might have been. I don't know if it was intentional or not. Uh, the Master Alchemist action was used to uh, burn the Hira Kisada, stop the first action from being used. It's a pretty valuable action, in my opinion. Uh, but of course, anything you do is to prevent the. Anything you have to do to prevent uh, the action, prevent Kisada from stopping the action you actually wanted to do, which is a uh, favorable grand home, which is also an action. Yes, Mind Cesare has a point. He probably could have used Stronghold, which is also an action which Kisada could have cancelled. The problem is he didn't win this conflict, so he he maybe need to use the Stronghold for the next one so we can uh, have enough stuff to play to void fist switch out yeah and uh, people pointed out there's no hawk tattoo so um, I, I still think like hawk tattooing in uh, Kisada here would have been really strong but I don't know. Apparently, it wasn't in the priority. He he. This probably means he doesn't have a void fist in hand and is saving the Mitsu ability to void fist on the second attack. Minus um, also says he should have done Paul first. Probably breaks on Paul. Potentially. I mean, Crab Stronghold still like if he defends with everything. Crab Stronghold still like gives him. A lot of political. Ooh, and this is nice. We see the crab player going in uh, uh, military fire with Kisada and Kami Unleashed. So this Kami Unleashed is going to get sacrificed. 
I imagine to dishonor Mitsu, and then he, when he wins the firing, he's going to probably dishonor Mitsu again. And the reason he can attack here with Kisada is because if he doesn't attack with Kisada, he's just gonna get converted by Mitsu regardless, so he might as well just throw him in there. What do you mean he has Void Fist? Do we know he has Void Fist in hand? <laughs> oh, mine's the same. <laughs> Yeah, Mind's Desire is uh, having a bit of a panic attack seeing the dragon, in his opinion, throwing this game away. Uh, Mind's Desire, of course, for those that doesn't know it, is a very, very strong dragon player. Uh, he won Gen Con as dragon, uh, so he's very, very good at playing the game, and especially at playing the game as dragon. Okay, so uh, now we have Kisada versus Mitsu. Currently, Mitsu is actually winning this. He is at 4 plus 2 plus 2, that's 8 against 7. So, currently, the defender is actually winning this conflict. Do the crab player have any buffs he can play here to uh, sort of like get over the top? Oh. A rebuild of Karada district, so he is going to be stealing weapons. He's going to be stealing weapons. Apparently not, he's going to be stealing reprieve because he knows he can't win this conflict regardless of which weapon he's stealing. So he stole the reprieve from the Yasa Shunsen onto Suichi. Oh, and then he plays a Bansai afterwards. That's that's really shrewd actually. And yeah, okay, so we did see Mitsu get used here. He did use a hurricane he tried to use a hurricane punch from this guard but got cancelled by Kisada. Yes, let go is indeed a card, but uh, having the dragon player let go his own reprieve always feels super bad as the dragon player. Right, so uh, the crab player actually won this and he chooses to get a firing to dishonor this Mitsu. Which is a bit strange because uh, next turn this Master Alchemist is just gonna re-honor him. But hey, it is what it is. Alright, do we see the uh, Dragon player try and push here? No, we actually do see Worky B pass their conflict opportunity. Which makes no sense because uh, Switchy has Covert and he's just gonna put uh, uh, this uh, Shunsen, force Shunsen to stay at home. So, um, for those that doesn't know, uh, Covert is a keyword. When this character attacks, choose one character without Covert, that character cannot be declared as a defender. So he walks in with carry switch and says, nope, Shunsen, you can't defend this, and then he breaks it pretty much unopposed. Or actually, he did break it unopposed. And then he uses the air ring to take an honor from him. So Workabee is actually down to four honor now, a single card, and now the crab player has four cards, and he has three characters that's sticking, uh, sticking around. And one of them is due to the reprieve he stole with Karada District. Why is the Suichi dishonored? Oh, he even played a spice at court. So we see a Pathfinder's Blade and let go discarded at random. That let go was going to get rid of that reprieve. 
interesting. Oh, and then we see another huge play. So we see a Way of the Crab in the uh, Fate phase, phase. So Way of the Crab is sacrifice a friendly crab character, choose an opponent, that player must sacrifice a character. So during the uh, Fate phase, he played this and sacrificed his third tower guard. And since the dragon player only had two cards, the big two-fated Master Alchemist and the big two-fated Mitsu, he had to choose one of those to, to discard, which is super, super annoying for the dragon player. And uh, chat actually pointed out, yes, Sweetie actually had mount and does not fall played on him. So if he attacked with Shunsen, it would not have mattered unless he could have used some sort of buff to buff Shunsen up to win that conflict. Because the Sweetie was not going to get bowed regardless. Uh, but hey, it is what it is now. And we do see the Gasha Swordsmith find a reprieve for the Dragon player, which is pretty nice. Then he's at least somewhat safe from uh, uh, another Way of the Crab. Uh, we do see a bid of 2 to 1. So it's, it's down to 3 honor for the Dragon player, and he has a dishonored character. He also did find uh, Kisuke Investigator, which is a really, really strong dragon card. It says, while this character is participating in a political conflict, spend one fate to an unclaimed ring, look at your opponent's hand, choose one of those cards and discard it. You really do not want the dragon player to use this in, in this situation where it's like four cards to six cards. It's just huge. The, the less cards you have at hand, the more a discard hurts. Oh, and now we see Switchy walk in and find Feast or Famine, which is uh, a pretty big find, actually. Uh, this is probably a turn where the dragon, uh, the not not the dragon player, the crab player doesn't care about breaking Feast or Famine, so this is potentially really good for him. Uh, the dragon player defends with. Uh, the Gasha Swordsmith. The Swordsmith has already fired his round, so he did find that Reprieve, which is really strong. Uh, so it's a 2 versus 2, and both player passes, and the Crab player gets to trigger the Air Ring again. So the Dragon player is now down to 2 honor. Uh, Linath, the Crab player does not run Assassination at all. So that combo is not going to happen. Alright, and now we see uh, the dragon player go in with Mitsu and Investigator on the Stronghold. I imagine the crab player is just going to defend with all he has. Uh, Mitsu is probably going to use his ability to cancel Kisada, and then we're going to see the investigator look at the crab player's hand, and then we're going to see the stronghold from the dragon player, and if he has a court games, he's going to use it to re honor up Mitsu. We shall, we shall see what happens. I don't think that is enough. Let's see. So, plus three... Uh, Plus two, yeah, no, that's not actually going to be enough, but uh, it's interesting. Oh, that's a heroic resolve. I don't think that is going to get used this round. And we do see, all right, so we see Worky B here, the dragon player who plays Cloud of Mind. So Kisada does no longer cancel the first ability of the round. 
So that's one card play. He needs to play one more card before he can uh, void fist anything else. What do we see the crab player do here? What do you even what do you even play as the crab player? I imagine the next action is going to be this investigator looking at the crab player's hand. So you, if you have anything that you don't want to get discarded, you play it now. Now is the time to play it if you don't want it discarded. I imagine this is exactly what's going through the crab. Alright, so there's nothing he either wants to play or can play right now. Uh, ready for battle, ready for battle, rebuild, reprieve, and reprieve. So he chooses to get rid of rebuild. I don't think we have seen anything worth rebuilding over Karada district at this point anyway. So I'm not sure that's a good choice. For those that doesn't know, rebuild has to be done up uh, onto a unbroken province. And the only unbroken province right now is Kar the province with Karada district. And I think you really want Karada District against Dragon. Alright, so what he does is he uses Karada District to steal Daishu from Mitsu. Uh, solid option. Of course, uh, the Daishu is going to get discarded uh, at the end of this turn. Uh, not discarded, it's going to go back to the Dragon player if. Kisada leaves this turn, but we do know that there's double reprieve in the crab player's hand. And how many let goes have we seen from the dragon player? A single let go we have seen, but he's only on two cards, so it would be really surprising to have the dragon player on double let go here. I imagine uh, Kisada and Suichi is going to get saved by reprieve, or perhaps just Kisada, because Kisada is big and strong. So currently we have 8 political to 4, this is not enough to break. Now we have uh, 8 to 6. Uh, we did actually see a court games to honor this Mitsu, so now is the question if he can get above Kisada in uh, strength here to f get the break. Actually, is that enough to get the break? No, I don't even think that's enough to get the break. That's rough. Uh, let's see, let's do the math. So if you punch out Kisada, that's minus one, two, three. Uh, so you have your eight to his one from Stronghold and one from Favorite. No, that's actually not enough. But you Hawk Tattoo in the Kogue. Because Hawk Tattoo is a fair and balanced card. So now the crab player is not winning and he is also doesn't have a character that can create a conflict, which is a bit rough. Maybe he has a conflict character in hand. Right, no, he plays the reprieve on Kisada. So, Hawk Tattoo. Right, so we actually... Oh, wow. Double reprieve on Kisada. <laughs> We're going all in on Kisada, boys. Uh, and we're probably going to see this uh, Swordsmith go for a Earthring here. That is going to be the biggest thing like that. I, I highly doubt that this Swordsmith can actually break this. I think, in fact, that is impossible. He needs to get... 13 military strength from 1. Uh, no, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's actually impossible. Uh, oh, interesting. We do see a void instead. We're going to void out this uh, Kogue. I'm guessing the crab player is okay with this.
kinda, kinda okay. All right, new round. Ah, actually, that's that's a good point. Uh, Kukuyin took care of. There, there, there was a possibility he could break uh, Karada district. Uh, if he has like a Bansai in hand, he can go in military and if this is shameful, he just Bansai's and it's broken. It's a very strong point. Ooh, we see Yukuni gets played. So Yukuni is probably going to copy either Mitsu or Swordsmith. Like, it, yeah, the Dragon player should be taking command of this game now again. Uh, in fact, I think the dragon player is probably going to win this turn. Yeah, since this Kisada is clouded, I think to just go. I think you just go all in political and break this. Just snap that province. Uh, so we see Swordsmith used here in the Dynasty phase. He searches top five cards, and he finds a Hawk Tattoo and adds it to his hand. This is a uh, an already played Hawk Tattoo, but he did find another Hawk Tattoo and, and added it to his hand. So there's always the threat of uh, the Hawk Tattoo pulling in stuff that doesn't want to be in conflicts. But yeah, uh, how much political does the Dragon player has here? He has three. Two, uh, so five, eight, uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, against uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, and now four of those is converted, so so he can actually just defend with. 6, which is going to be turned into 8, so uh, the first thing that we see is Switchy, uh, action during conflict in, in which this character is participating, if there's a holding in play, gain 1 fate, so we can see the gain 1 fate, and then we see the investigator spend the fate to a ring. Why did he attack Earth? Why on earth did he attack Earth with a Yorin play? For those that doesn't know, Yori says during Earth conflicts, each character you control gets plus one plus one. So he basically just gave the crab player two extra fours for free, just by going Earth. Which is, like, honestly, it's a bit beyond me, because going all in implies that you just want to snap this stronghold in two. That means you go for, like, and you you actually, you, uh, you converted Yuri outside, so you don't, you obviously don't want him to contribute his, his, his four political skill. And then you go Earth. I am a bit baffled, chat. I am a bit baffled by that decision. We do see that there is no way for the uh, crab player to boost strength here. So, uh, there's no way for the crab player. So, we have 15 to 8. So that is exactly 7 skill, and plus 2 doesn't do enough because plus 2 from the stronghold is going to get... Yeah, uh, the dragon player needs exactly 1 attachment, court gains, yeah, 
one attachment and court gains in order to win this conflict. Not even win this conflict, I mean uh, break this province. He need he needs the court games. Oh We see the Void Fist coming out. He plays a Void Fist to bow Suichi, but the Finger of Jade gets spent. So, I'm guessing this means... Does, has Yakuni copied any character yet? Oh, Yakuni has copied Misu. Yes, so Yakuni is now... Oh, wow. Yakuni is now going to use the Void Fist. And punch out Suichi. And now the crab player is toast. I think that's I think that's it. Uh in hand no, there's there's nothing in hand that can save him. Yeah, uh, that was uh, a bit strange, but uh, from what we've seen now, it's... Uh Rebuild... Don't, didn't he have any favorable gra No, he did not. Uh, yeah, currently I think the Dragon player has just won this game. I don't think there's anything... Yeah! That's it! The crab player fought valiantly, but uh, Mitsu and Void Fist are too strong. So, in the end, the dragon player prevailed and beat out the crab player because of Mitsu and Yukuni acting as a proxy Mitsu, just Void Fisting everything. Yeah, uh, that is, I guess, true, because Yukuni isn't a monk. Yeah, if he stole the katana onto Suichi, uh, he didn't have enough strength to bow him. Of course, you could have just used Anvil's Castle uh, to gain Mitsu up to f uh, from uh, 4 to 5 due to Finger of Jade, and then you had enough to bow out Suichi regardless, so yeah, that doesn't really matter. So, uh, congratulations to Germany. I think that's uh, Germany winning in total. I'm, I'm not sure actually, I'm gonna have to look into that, but uh, uh, that's it for this game. I am going to head off bed now because it's 11 where I live. Thank you so much everyone that's uh, watching. Uh, I guess I'll see you next time. There might be even more uh, cup games going on this evening, I'm not sure, but uh, I think Mind's Desire and... Uh... Alright, so someone in chat has basically just told me that G Germany and Cyprus is now 1-1. I think the first match was won by Bill Curley's army against uh, Widwen, which was a really interesting game. Uh, Bill Curtis on me plays a very aggro phoenix deck and he just about with the skin of his teeth broke the scorpion stronghold <laughs> which was really interesting I think he was down to zero cards in hand and just exactly amount the right amount of uh, military strength to break the, the scorpions and trans position which was really interesting but uh, again uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to close this stream now. See you guys around.